Throughout the years, one of the main things that I see in my comment section is people want to know, Frog, what gang ran the yard while you were in prison? Who had the hold on the compound? Who was entitled and who was at the tip top of the chain at the institutions you was at? For this video right here, I'm going to be dropping that real spill and I'm going to let you know what organization had shit in the lock while I was locked up. Ha <laughs> ha, Dom the best, finna be this way till I EOS Take it how you want nigga, yeah I'm a pro Fuck around, I'll bust your lot while you're at Vizzo I hate to be this way, but I live for the moment Waking up every day, show me an opponent Shanks on deck, hitting bitches with locks So much pool, I can even start you from the box You don't wanna pay rent, got me bent Got lax on deck, your money was well spent Vultures on the prowl, so don't try testing Step two, cause violent first steps, finessing You a hold down man, suitcase this My cell phone and my charger don't walk with a limp Get it knocked off or missing, you gon' get it Next time I see you ass, you gon' leave airlifted What's up, y'all? You already know, man. K-Frog TV back in the building. Y'all go ahead and do me that solid favor now. Make sure you hit that like, subscribe button. And also make sure you hit the notification bell so you can see it first. Welcome back to the channel, y'all. Today I'm going to be talking about which gang ran the yard while I was in prison. Okay? This right here, people have been asking me for the longest. I always tend to see this comment thrown in there somewhere out of any video I drop. Okay? And... I'm going to give it to y'all as real as I can. I'm going to break it down to the best way that I can through my experience. And before I do get into that, I'm going to let y'all know that. Shout out to all the gangs out there. Anything I say in this video ain't me being biased towards any, you know, nation or anything like that. But I'm just going to keep it real and I'm going to let y'all know out of the institutions I went to, which gangs ran what. All right. Now, for those that don't know, I was sentenced to 60 months in FSP, which is Florida State Prison. All right. Now... Throughout my five-year sentence, my first institution I landed at was Calhoun CI. That was my main compound, okay? What I mean by that is, of course, when you get arrested, you go to the county. From the county, you go to whatever region you're in's reception center, which mine was South Florida Reception Center, okay? When I first got to South Florida Reception Center, there's gang members everywhere, but there wasn't really one that ran it like it was their compound. There was just gangs running around having free for all doing whatever they do but it wasn't really like they was in charge they had that shit on lock or anything like that because that's just a reception center you get what i'm saying you're just gonna go there stay there for a little while and get transferred you feel me so after you go to your reception center you're gonna eventually go through the other reception centers until you land in the region to where whatever institution they put your ass in the system to go to is so for me I was all the way in the panhandle, the tip top of Florida, Bluntstown, okay, Calhoun CI. When I first landed at Calhoun CI, okay, when I first seen that they had different gangs and stuff like that, you know, when you first get there, you're not going to really know who's part of what. You're going to start seeing tattoos. You're going to start seeing handshakes. You're going to start peeping the differences, the way the shit that they move and the stuff they say, the what, what they call each other, you know, things like that to where you know which organization is what, okay? But while I was at Calhoun CI, hands down, who was running the pound while I was there was the Zoes, all right? For those that don't know about the Zoes, I'm talking about ZMF, you feel me? Them boys right there, which is originated down here in Broward County. You know what I'm saying? Shout out to the 26, all them Z's out there. Shout out to all the fam. All right, now, not saying that the other gangs didn't do, you know, anything, you feel me, on the compound as well. But while I was there, them Z's had everything you could think of. Them Z's was making people break it off, extortion, beating people up. I got put in G-Dorm, Gangland, and there was like 17 of them on the exact side that I was in. Like you got G1 and G2. There was like 17 of them, which were all my dogs, on, on the same exact side that I was on. You feel me? And the shit that I went through in there, like watching them and seeing how they was, they was the ones that opened my eyes to show me how real prison can get as far as with hands, okay? People weren't wetting people as often at Calhoun as they were at any other camp I went to, but a couple people did get cut here and there or whatever, you know, but not as much, you know? It did happen. I did witness it. I did see some hits get put on people. I did see the hits go through. I seen things that will make you realize and understand, okay, I'm in prison. This shit can get real, 
you know. Don't think just because ain't nothing happened that, oh, it ain't going to happen. Because it can, all right? Because I went through the reception centers and about, I'd say, three, three months into my prison bid, which means 90 days after being in the county jail, leaving the county jail 90 days ago, about three months later, by the time I got transferred around, staying at reception centers, Three months later is when I landed and it finally hit me. We're like, okay, this shit can get ratchet. Because when I went to the reception centers, that shit didn't seem all that. Yeah, people fight and shit like that. One dude got like taken advantage of and held down and like fucking took by some other dudes at the reception center. That happened. But you know, it's like not that much stuff was going down. So when I landed at Calhoun and I seen the way that this shit was in rotation and I seen how them boys make you prove that you're going to bump. Just like when I got put in G-Dorm, I had to prove that I'll bump. You know what I'm saying? I had to get in there. You know what I'm saying? But I never met any inmates that were like so cool and, 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 and you know, like so down to earth. But it was just it was just business, which means like them extorting, them, them wanting shit to eat, them, them robbing, them, them gambling with people and then taking it, them beating people up, them jumping people in, them fucking bringing people home to their organization. All this stuff that I seen go down inside this dorm was a lifestyle to them. You feel me? So I seen a side of disease that I had never seen before. And luckily for me, that's my home team. That shit came from down here, from down in Broward County where I'm from. When you go to our county jail, damn near 90% of the population is Z. You feel me? Damn near 90% of them are all Zs, you know? But you don't really see it like in prison is when they come together and they, 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 they stay together. You feel me? So me being in the door with them, they taught me how slimy and grimy and how real something can be. You know, and I, it made me learn. You know, I had to get in the pain a couple times. They seen it, you know what I'm saying? And it came to the point to where they respected me because I was the only white boy in the dorm that was with the shit. You know what I'm saying? So, me being around them and me, and see, me seeing how they run the institution, which was tough because it was always something. You know what I'm saying? Me being around them and seeing how it was when I landed at another institution... And I seen another gang, which I'll get to that in a moment. When I seen another gang was actually running that compound, you know, it kind of like, it was like me watching a documentary, you know, of, of this gang. Me being able to see how this gang is. And then I go somewhere else and see how this gang is, how this gang's running shit. You know, it, it kind of like opened my eyes to show me different sides because... Here I'm at Calhoun and you got disease that are on top of shit, you know what I'm saying? Which you had a lot of bloods, a lot of, you know, Latin Kings and a lot of GDs. You had cutthroats, you know what I'm saying? Stuff like that, Crips. But disease were the ones that was like getting it out the muscle, you know what I'm saying? Like, them boys was like, if they got to take, they going to take. No matter how they get it, they going to get it, you understand? Like, it isn't like... All the other gangs that were there that made a little bit of money and shit like that, they wasn't on that extortion stuff. You know what I'm saying? They was on like getting money amongst their self within their organization, within their clique and stuff like that. But them Z's, them boys was with whatever, bro. They didn't care who had it. If they was gang affiliated, they didn't care if you was a neutron. They didn't care who you knew. None of that shit. If them Z's wanted it, they was coming to get it. Straight up. And that's how it was. And I got to hang out with some cool ass people that was literally about that life. You feel me? Behind me going to prison and landing at this institution. Now it wasn't peaches and cream, you know, at first when I got there. Of course, like I said, I had to fight, you know what I'm saying? But they fucked with me, you know what I'm saying? And it was my home team. So once they see me get in the paint, because they're the ones that sent the first dude at me when I first landed in that dorm. If y'all remember a long time ago, I mentioned how I went in there and someone came at me and was like, oh, what's up, bro? You bang? And I said, nah, I'm a neutron. Neutron means you're neutral. You're not affiliated. And then he started saying, oh, okay, well, you feel me? This is gangland. You either got to pay rent, break it off, or check in. And I started laughing. And I ended up getting into it with him. And then he said, where you from? I said, I'm from Davey. You feel me? And when I started laughing, first I, I started laughing. He's like, oh, you think it's funny? I said, shit. I said, I I'll fight. That, that was my first answer. He didn't even say nothing about fighting. He said, you either got to pay rent, break it off, or check in. This is gangland. And I started laughing and said, I'll fight. 
So he, so he was like, oh, you think it's funny? And then that's when I said, I'll fight. And then he was like, oh, we could do that shit too. And then I said, it don't matter, I'm from Davey, you feel me, shit. He's like, all right. So he walked over to the Z's, you know what I'm saying? And, and you know, because he was trying to get cool points with them. So he was kind of like, oh, yeah, I pressed them, blah, 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 and this and that. And then he said, oh, he from, he from, uh, where he say I'm from? I'm from Delray, which Delray is like, on the border of Broward and Palm Beach area. You know what I'm saying? So them boys don't look at Delray as no home team Broward shit. You feel me? So they said, oh, we don't care where he's from, man. He got to break it off or, you know what I'm saying? Blah, blah, blah. Go back at him. And then I ended up getting into it with him. And then when I was bumping him, I said, man, we could do this shit all day. Bitch, it don't matter. I'm from Broward County. And I was talking while we were fighting. You know what I'm saying? And then one dude walked up, which ended up being my dog Pop at the time. He's like, what's up, bro? And I threw my setup at him. You know what I'm saying? And... He said, where you say you from? I said, bitch, I'm from Davey. And I, I, I thought he was finna jump in. And he was like, man, it's our home team. They didn't even know I was from the same county as them like that. You see? They, he told them I was from somewhere else. You feel me? And then I gained their respect. And then every time something would go down in the dorm, I was in, I was in the middle of that shit. You know, so they ran that compound. You know what I'm saying? And one thing I will say, when I get onto this next institution, I'm not going to down great or talk bad and say the z's didn't nothing nothing because one thing about them zoes okay came from broward county now one thing i will say is no matter where it is no matter what institution no matter how far it is wherever there is z's at wherever there is zoes them boys right there are known Money makers, them boys going to get it in. It ain't like they going to curl. They going to be hush mouth. It ain't like they're going to not exist on the compound. If there is some there, you best believe them boys are holding it down. That's one thing I will say. Every institution I went to that had Z's, even if they didn't have numbers at every camp, but every institution I went to, the ones that was there, putting on, rocking out. Wet and shit, getting money, extortion, robbing, whatever it is. Them boys put on for Broward County and they rep that ZMF shit. And I salute them. That's one thing I'll say about them. You feel me? For real. All right, now let's jump into my next camp I landed at. After Calhoun, when I got the negative adjustment transfer, I ended up having to go through all the reception centers again. When I went through all the reception centers, I landed at Charlotte CI, okay? That right there is one of the deadliest camps in the state of Florida. All you have to do is look it up, straight up. For people who think it was a playground or think it was a joke or a kitty camp or people from the West Coast who don't know about the East Coast like that, who think, oh, that's a level two yard or whatever y'all want to say about it, before you even say anything, just Google it. Just look up Charlotte CI. Charlotte Correctional Institution. You can even type in Charlotte CI Mortality Sheet. Any one of these institutions I'm telling you about, all you have to do is go on Google and type in the name of it and put Mortality Sheet and it will show you a printout with everybody's name, the date they got deceased, the, their picture, and then it'll even show most of the paperwork. You feel me? And you will see that Charlotte CI was no joke. Now, when I got there, it was a different ball game than what I was used to at Calhoun. And what I mean by that is there was more knife stabbings, people getting wet up, people getting airlifted, flown off the compound, never seeing them again, people getting their throat sliced, you know, like all types of shit compared to more of a hand-to-hand -hand on combat, you know what I'm saying? But Charlotte kind of like made it to where it's like, okay, now you got to get with the program, you got to... You got to, whatever you were used to before, you may have been used to fighting and all that shit, but this right here, boy, you're in a different lineup now. You're, 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 you're where people are trying to kill you over nothing. You know what I'm saying? And when I landed there, I started peeping all the different gangs, you know, started seeing every different organization that I knew a little bit from the shit that I learned at Calhoun, right? So... I seen the Z's, I seen the Bloods, the Crips, the GDs, you know, the Cutthroats, different little organizations and stuff like that. Now, at the time, while I was at Charlotte, there was two gangs that was at the top of all the other gangs. And the ones that ran the compound to me while I was there would have to be the Kings and the Bloods. And them two right there, them two right there were the ones that like, 
You got the kings always on some business shit. They're going to handle up. They're going to do what they got to do. You know what I'm saying? At all times, you know what I'm saying? And majority of my homeboys there at the time, they were kings. You feel me? And shout out to all of them. Now, they, they got shit in order. You know what I'm saying? They had a grasp on the compound and was able to manage and hold it the way that it should be. You get what I'm saying? And they did what they needed to do. You feel me? Now, when it comes to the bloods, the bloods... Everywhere you go, they have numbers. They have massive numbers, and they're going to put on for their self no matter where it is. They're going to stab people. They're going to rob people. They're going to extort. They're going to do whatever it is they have to do. They're well-known all around the world, okay? But majority of the shit that I seen go down amongst with bloods was blood-on-blood -blood violence. You know what I'm saying? Like them eating their own kind, stabbing their own kind. Not saying they didn't stab other gang members, because they did. There was plenty of wars with them against other nations as well. You feel me? But it's mostly a east side eats a west side, you know, back and forth beef. Or he stabbed him, he stabbed... And it, it's mostly amongst each other when it comes to those. Now, the GDs, they were on the compound too while I was at Charlotte. They had hella numbers. You know, people people knew about them. They were doing their one-two as well. So I'm not going to leave them out of the, you know, the topic. They were known as well also. You feel me? And like I said, the Zs. The Zs were always known too. The Zs wouldn't even have, they could have 15 people. The other gangs can have 35 people. And them 15 Zs are going to rock out against them 35. So you can never count them out because they're short in numbers. Because one thing about them, boy, they're going to slang that iron. You feel me? I know someone there that was smacking shit. And when I say smacking shit, I'm not talking about smack you with a hand. I'm talking about smacking shit. Like a cup up with a, with a machete, a lawnmower blade, hit you across your head with it. You know what I'm saying? I ain't even going to put their names out there. But I know some real ones that was literally, literally airlifting people. Flight, leaving people dead, lifeless. You feel me? So you can't leave them out. You feel me? They was definitely there doing their thing as well. All right? Now... Let's jump to my last camp, all right? Because once I got transferred from Charlotte CI for K-Frog TV after being in the box for 277-day stretch. They gave me 270. I ended up doing seven extra days because they transferred me on my last day. And I stayed in the box a whole week through the reception center before I landed at my last camp, which was DeSoto, okay? When I landed at DeSoto, you know, now... Here I'm, you know, you gotta, you gotta readapt again. You gotta look around, peep your surroundings, and you have to readapt to what it is you've learned throughout these last few years where you were at. Just like when I got to Charlotte, I had to learn and adapt. Okay, the Z's who I was cool with who ran the compound, who made it to where it was always bumping and fighting, and you know, taught it to where you know you're gonna get you a head up at all times. They're not in charge no more, basically. So now when you go to this, when I went to Charlotte, you know, I had to readapt. You know, I had to peep the scenery. Okay, they're trying to kill over here. You know, you got these people. The Z's over here don't give a damn if you're home team or not. You know, they'll extort, rob, whoever, you feel me? But I had to readapt. Same thing when I landed at DeSoto, my last camp. Now, when I landed at DeSoto, it was 100% different than both those camps. It was totally different than... Calhoun and totally different than Charlotte. When I got to DeSoto, man, there was no structure. Okay, literally. And what I mean by that is everybody was just like rogue. Like everybody was just their own thing. Like they were, there was gang members, you know, and they'd go see each other and you'd see them meet up and talk and shit like that. But you might see three bloods right there. And then you might see three GDs right there. And then you see three kings, couple zoes, but it wasn't like no riots. There wasn't no like wars, you know, gang on top of gang. It wasn't no, oh, uh, you hear about a, a GD stabbing a blood. Now the GDs and bloods are at war. No, none of that shit went on at DeSoto while I was there. And DeSoto was known to be a ratchet camp back in the day. You feel me? Before they put the gate up and split the rec yards, I heard stories about DeSoto back in the day, you feel me? So when I went there, I was ready for whatever, you know? I felt like shit. Majority of the people that I knew on the streets that been to prison was telling me about DeSoto. Telling me all these gang and violent ass stories about there before I ever even landed in prison. So when I landed at DeSoto, I was like, okay, fuck it, it is what it is. I fit right in over here. 
Okay, all this shit that I heard about, I'm with it. You know what I'm saying? So I fit right in. So when I went there, I was expecting more than what I got. And like I said, I only seen two people get wet the rest of my bid while I was at DeSoto. But I was only there for like my last 90 to 100 days in prison. You see, I got transferred from confinement in Charlotte when I had less than 100 days left to go home. So my last camp where I touched down was there. And my bunkie at the time was a blood. You feel me? People who I actually seen when I got to that institution, I knew from Charlotte CI that were bloods that got stabbed by their own kind and, you know, got, got wet up by their own brother, you know, shit like that. So when I seen them, they were like, bro, what's up with you? Embracing me and shit, you know, I seen them and I wanted to get a knife. I wanted to get a phone, like everything that I'm used to doing at Charlotte, man. I've been in the box 200 and something days, boy, I'm ready to, you know, shit, fuck. Fuck getting my feet wet. I'm ready to dive in. I'm ready. You know what I'm saying? I'm trying to get back to doing what I'm used to doing. I took a long enough vacation sitting in confinement. That's how I looked at it. I'm ready to get in the mix. And then the camp that I happened to land at when I finally got out of the box. Because like I said, when I went through South Florida's reception center, they keep you in the box until you hit your next camp. So they transferred me on my last day in the box at Charlotte. So I had to stay in the box at South Florida reception center for one week. From a Tuesday to a Tuesday. They took me from Charlotte on Tuesday, bam, put me at South Florida Reception Center. Stayed in the box a whole week, and then the next Tuesday transferred me to DeSoto. There was only two buses going. One was going to Charlotte, one was going to DeSoto. I was like, boy, I know they ain't reclassifying me and sending me right back to the same camp, Charlotte. I would have been like, boy, they, boy, people was already fucked up about me, boy. They would have been like, bitch, frog, frog, boy, the God's back, boy. Frog's a God, boy, he pulled that one off. You know, but of course they weren't going to send me right back there. So they sent me to DeSoto. Now when I got there, I was expecting to see, you know, different shit go down amongst the gangs. And I'm, I'm expecting to see the things that I hear. The things that, you know, people have witnessed through their time and their stay. You know, and then from what I know, from my experience, from my last camps. But when I went there, like I said, nobody. There was, I can't even tell you which gang was in charge because literally there was no there was no structure you know like for instance when i was at charlotte ci you know the kings and um the kings and the z's they weren't allowed to you know they didn't they didn't get high like that you know they they they, they were against getting high you know they weren't allowed to get high they had to do mandatory wreck they had to be up when the lights are on like they had a different like structure shit that they had to do you know that they're required to do or they get a violation from the organization now, once I got this damn DeSoto, I look, you might see a king over there twacking out, smoking. You know, he's over there all slumped on the floor next to a blood. And then there's a GD walking around trying to get him some or whatever. You know, it was just totally different. There was no structure. Everybody was like on their own. No, they didn't have like no head or the head really didn't put shit together like they should have. It was just like a zombie camp, you know. And what I mean by that is... It was just, it was like a dead camp, you know, it was just different, you feel me? It wasn't like any institution I was used to go to. And when I was getting transferred from Charlotte, my ICT, my, my classification officer, which inmate classification team, you go to them when you get time in the box, you know, you have a little hearing and all this shit. They sit you down in shackles and they talk to you. And then I said, oh, what, I'm being transferred? He's like, yeah, and now I'm going to transfer you to a big boy camp. That's what he said, from Charlotte. Right? I looked at him, I said, man, people are dying over here every single day, bro. It can't get worse than Charlotte. Literally, that's exactly what it was. You feel me? And they sent me to soft ass DeSoto. Like, I couldn't believe it. You know what I'm saying? And to me, it's mind blowing because so much things went down at Charlotte. Like, left and right, left and right. Like, people dying, gone, dying, gone. A lot of them, they put you know, natural causes, or a lot of them they put accident, or they covered up a lot of shit that the guards did, you know what I'm saying, and stuff like that, but if you look on inmate, I mean, uh, if you look on the, the mortality sheets, Charlotte CI mortality sheet on Google, and you look at the years that I was there, you'll see there was a lot, there was about 15 deaths almost each year, you know, just, just right there on that little institution, you know, but I can't really pinpoint something on any gang while I was at DeSoto. You know, like I said, my bunkie was a blood. His damn 
main homeboy was a GD, so every day I had a blood and a folk in my room, you know, so it was like, it was just totally different, you know, that just shows no matter where you go, no matter how it was while you were there, camps rotate. They flip institutions, okay, which means you might go here at this time and it might be ran by this gang. And then you come back six months later and then that gang might got swiped off the compound either by another gang or a bunch of gangs teamed up against that gang or the officers flipped the compound. And just one night they shipped 70% of the institution and brought two other institutions over here. You see, there's a lot of like rotation, so you can't really be like, oh, yeah, well, what's it called? Who runs that camp forever? Because eventually, the more and more shit you get into, because you're going to have to get in the shit to hold the title that your gang is on top. And the more and more shit you get into, whether you're getting caught or getting away with it, you know, word travels. So you could be a gang member and you and your gang can run this institution and you could be wetting people, smacking people, getting people airlifted off the compound, never getting caught and never find weapons. After a while, people are going to be talking because they're in fear. You know, they're going to be talking about you. They're going to be spreading the word to the police, you know, and shit like that because they're in fear of how much damage you are doing under the radar. You feel me? And then before you know it, they're going to back the bus up and they're going to take all them gang members. All the ones who are part of that organization, people they see walking around, because every institution has a gang sergeant. He knows who's part of what. You feel me? Straight up. When I got to Charlotte, the gang sergeant there, boy, he had a big old buck 50 scar across his face from being wet up by inmates. You see what I'm saying? So it's like they're eventually going to put y'all all together and then ship you. You see? So it's like there's no way you're going to run the camp and not have to put in work not have to harm someone. Because in prison, everybody wants your hustle. Everybody wants to do what you're doing. What you and your organization got going on, they want parts of it. You know what I'm saying? If you're making $10,000 like this, they're gonna be like, okay, I'm gonna, I, I wanna step on his toes and take over the 10,000 he's making. You see, that's how they do it. And literally, there's so much shit going on that eventually, this camp may have been ran by bloods or ran by Latin kings. Later on down the line, you go to that institution. We don't know what you're used to, but now it's ran by folks. Now it's ran by cutthroats. You see? Like that. So at the end of the day, you can't really expect an institution to be 100% like I'm telling you. Because when you were there, it may have been different. Or knock on wood, if your ass ends up going there, it may be different. You feel me? So that's what made me want to do this video to clear it on up, to let people know you can't just pinpoint it on one gang, what camp that is, you feel me? Like when I was at Charlotte and I was getting transferred, they were going to send me to Okeechobee at first. That's what they had told me in property. Not the officers or not the property lady, but the inmate who was the orderly at property. He told me, yeah, Frog, you're going to Chobie. I said, oh, Chobie? He's like, yeah. I said, all right. And I looked at my dog. And he was like, damn, fraud, that's a Thresse camp. That means it was ran by Thresses. You feel me? I said, oh, well, I don't give a fuck. You know what I'm saying? And then he was like, man, I was like, I don't care. It don't matter. And he was like, man, they, they got phone jammers. I was like, damn, dog. Because at first he was like, it's a fucked up camp. I, he's like, that's a Thresse camp. I said, it don't matter, dog. Fuck it. He said, man, they got phone jammers. I'm like, damn, dog, it's a fucked up camp. Because phone jammers, so you don't get no service on your phones. See? So... No matter where you go, camps are going to be known as being ran by this gang. And then next time, it's going to be something different. Because it's so much, they don't want you getting comfortable. They're moving people around left and right. That before you know it, it's going to flip. And I've told you all this numerous times. Just go into confinement for like 30 days. When you come out and you get put back in the same dorm. That whole dorm ain't everybody you remember being in there. Just from you being gone 30 days. One month in confinement. You get out and get put in a dorm. And say there's 100 people in that dorm when you went to confinement, you get out, there will probably be 15 people in there that you remember out of that 100. That's how it goes. You see what I'm saying? So you can't really go off of that, you know. But that's what the comment section's for, y'all. So y'all make sure y'all drop in the comment section. If you ever did time anywhere, you know, what gang was in charge where you were at? What gang had that shit held down? And if you ever landed back at the same institution later on, was the same people in charge? was the same gang above all the other gangs. You know what I'm saying? Like, 
What gang did nobody want to fuck with? Was it the Bloods? Was it the Crips? Was it the Kings? The GDs? Whatever it is. I know on the West Coast, y'all have some organizations that we, we don't really have down this way. There may be a couple of them down here, but they didn't have like an organization put together, you know, at our institutions. You know what I'm saying? But y'all let me know in the comment section, man. But anyways, I'm glad I finally got to touch this topic because people been asking for this shit for the longest. I appreciate y'all watching like I always say. Y'all make sure you hit that like, subscribe button on the way out if you ain't hit it when you first jumped in here. And like I always tell y'all, keep them rats, squares, clowns, chomos, pedos, gunners, wannabe island boys, clout chasers, people who pull out golds, people who finance rims of 2022 but want to act like they fucking a dope boy, like they, they got that shit out the mud. Stop lying to these people, man. Keep that shit out your circle, man. Till next time, this the one and only Frog.